the year since this is my first tutorial of 2021. I am going to be showing you guys today how to make your own geode resin painting. And I'm so excited for this tutorial because a lot of you asked me last year when I made my first geode painting for instructions and I just figured it would be way easier to put everything in a video for you guys. Um, I also have some really exciting news. I will be taking custom orders for these paintings. So you guys can contact me and I'll list my Instagram name um, down below and you can message me on, um, I don't know if you can message on YouTube, I don't think so, but um, comment me on YouTube, message me on Instagram, whatever. And I will be um, working with you guys so you guys can pick out your own colors that will match your living space. And um, I'll be taking those custom orders starting next month. So get in contact with me ASAP for that. And also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. All of the products used today will be listed in the description. I will also attach any links that I can. Everything I got for this tutorial was from either Hobby Lobby, Amazon, or Michaels. So the first thing I'm doing is sticking my painter's tape to the back of my canvas so it doesn't get messy in the back. And you're going to do this on all four sides of the back of the canvas. I'm taking my hot glue gun and I'm just going to create borders with the glue. So these borders are going to be what you put your fire glass or your crushed glass inside of. So this is just going to help your glass not move before you secure it on there with your rest in. And guys, I'm going to mention this a few times during this video. This creation is your own, so you don't have to do exactly this placement. You can really put your glass wherever you choose. So just think about where you want your glass to be placed and just kind of visualize how you want your paintings to come out and go ahead and create those borders. Okay guys, for this next step, you're going to need your fire glass as well as E6000 glue. And guys, I actually could not find crushed crafting glass anywhere. It was sold out at like three different Michaels and I'm so glad it was because I started searching for alternatives and I found out that you can actually use fire glass for crafting and the glass is a lot thicker chunks of glass. So this actually worked a lot better than traditional crushed glass because it gave more of a, a geo type of effect to the painting. So what I'm doing is I'm just applying my E6000 glue. And if you know anything about E6000 glue, it is really long lasting. It really bonds things together for a permanent hold. So I'm just taking a really small amount of this glue and I'm just kind of spreading it on my canvas directly to put my larger pieces of fire glass on top of just to make sure that they are super secure and that they don't shift. Another great thing about using this fire glass instead of the crafting crushed glass is that it actually came in a way larger amount. I got 10 pounds of this on Amazon for I think it was like $26, which is great. I will be listing the link on the description down below.
so I did have some leftover crushed glass from a project I did a few months ago. So I'm just going to use this to fill in the gaps between the larger chunks of fire glass. And if you guys don't choose to get crushed glass, you can just go ahead and keep layering on your fire glass. But since I already had some of this leftover, I decided why not use it to fill in the spaces. And now I'm just going to take a dry paintbrush and just kind of sweep in any fallout into my glue lines. So another product I found on Amazon that I really liked were these clear quartz crystal sticks that came attached to a string. So what I did is I just went ahead and cut the string and poured the sticks on my canvas. And now I'm taking my glue gun along with my E6000 glue and I'm just going to glue these sticks kind of facing upward and I just want to create this effect that's like a 3D geode coming out of the canvas. So I'm just going to take anything I could find, some cups, some sticks, just to help set these crystals in place. And once I have them glued on my canvas, I'm going to let them dry for about two hours before moving on to the next step. I had a few crystals left over so what I'm doing is I'm just gluing them on in random spots throughout my canvas just to add a little bit more dimension and I'm just putting the remaining little bit of crushed glass that I have in the middle of this little section that I sectioned off with my glue Guys, again, you can place your crushed glass or your fire glass anywhere that you want on your canvas. Now, just like we did earlier, we're going to apply some of our E6000 glue and feel free to use a brush or a wooden stick to kind of just spread it on your canvas like I did. And like we did before, we're going to just place our fire glass or our crushed glass right on our canvas. And just a quick tip guys, do remember to remove any excess glue that might get on your canvas. This happens when you use your hot glue gun. Sometimes there's some strings of hot glue and that'll just make things messy when you pour on your paint. Alright guys, now we're going to get into mixing our resin. And if you have no idea what resin is, resin is basically what's going to make your painting look shiny and professional and it's going to hold your gems in place so you're going to basically take 
the two bottles that your resin comes in and you're going to pour the contents of each bottle in a different cup. So the mixing for this is one to one. So you want equal parts of each liquid. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to pour the liquids and I'm going to mix both of them separately before I pour them together and mix them together. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just doing it with a wooden popsicle stick that I could just throw away afterwards because this resin does get everywhere. So if you do get it on a counter or on your floor, it is going to harden and it's going to be a pain to get out. So definitely make sure that you prep your surfaces correctly, use cardboard, use plastic, use towels, whatever you could to make sure that your surface is protected before you work with the resin. Once we have our clear resin mixed, we are going to just pour a generous amount over anywhere that we place our gems. Okay, so now what you guys are going to do is you're going to repeat the same steps you did before. You're going to add equal parts of each solution into a cup and mix it really well. And this time you're going to go in with the first color you're working with. So the first paint I am working with is going to be white. So after I have my solution mixed really well, I'm going to go ahead and add my white acrylic paint to my solution. Now guys, you kind of want to eyeball this. You don't want to add too much paint that the resin does not harden correctly and that it gets too, too thick um, with paint. But you also don't want to add too little that it's going to be watery when you pour it on your canvas or translucent. So what I do is I just kind of add gradually as much paint as I think I will be needing. You just want to make sure that your color looks thick. And guys, we're just going to pour this paint just in kind of a random distribution. We're just pouring as much or as little of each color as we want. And since this is your own personal creation, you can use the amount of each color that you desire. So I'm just pouring it. I'm not painting it in or brushing it on with anything. I'm just using my cup and my popsicle stick. Since I had some white paint left over, I'm just going to add some of this extra fine white glitter to some of the paint and I'm just going to continue on pouring my paint on my canvas. And you are going to repeat these steps for every color paint that you are using. So I am doing it for my black, my silver, and my gold paint. Now, once you have all of your resin and paint, on your canvas, you are going to take your hot gun and start applying heat to your canvas. And guys, use this with caution because the first time I made a painting, I had a ton of burns all over my arms and legs. So this gun gets really, really hot. Just make sure that you don't get your fingers under the heat. And you can use a popsicle stick like I am doing if there's any areas that are really stubborn and your resin is not moving. Sometimes that means that we apply too much of the acrylic paint. So you can go ahead and use that popsicle stick and then apply that heat directly after. So we're applying the heat until all of the colors look blended together in a marble type of look.
then I had a little leftover white and resin so I just poured that on top because I did feel like I wanted a little bit more white on my painting. Next I'll be adding some silver foil so I'm just going to take this foil out of the bag. I had this left over from another project as well and this foil does get kind of messy just a heads up. All you guys really need to do is just take a handful of it and sprinkle it around your painting. You'll see when you're working with it that it's really really fragile and easy to break. So you just want to apply some of the flakes throughout your painting. This step is optional, but I think it looks really nice on this painting. Alright guys, so it's the next day. I let my painting sit out to dry overnight and now I'm taking this metallic paint marker that I found at Hobby Lobby. So I got this in silver as well as gold and you guys remember those hot glue lines that we applied on our canvas in the beginning? Well, they pretty much disappeared because we have paint all over. So we want to kind of make those lines come back to life. And by doing this, it's just going to add more definition of where our geode is in our canvas. So I'm just going to look for these glue lines or just kind of estimate where these lines were. And I'm going to outline them with my silver and my gold paint markers. And feel free to use as much of this metallic paint marker as you would like. I'm just brushing some lines lightly throughout my painting. And here is my finished product. 